you know, I've heard it once said that when it comes to making TV shows, it takes a lot of competence, passion, effort, and so many other things, though. And that's the thing here, though. When it comes right down to it, I try my best to make videos with passion and everything and like that because I really do care about my audience. And honestly, when it comes right down to it, I wouldn't have it either way, though. But to give you an idea what that's like, we need a little backstory. Back in May of 2024, this year, I had taken a look at 13 Magical Girl shows, all of which were still, in my opinion, pretty good shows. But even with that said, however, I shouldn't have done 13. The reason why... That was because if you recall from that time though, I did have a little trouble with my head and everything. No, I wasn't feeling too good. I was also getting a little dizzy and a little a bit overheated with my mind. But even with that said, however, I still you know, motivate myself to do it though. Mostly because I wanted to do a Magical Girl Month and I wanted to dedicate it to Mishia. By the way though, if anyone's watching this, I do appreciate all of you guys for being this patient though. I was originally going to do a video yesterday, but due to my stammering, I couldn't do it. What's more, I had so much in my mind as is that I couldn't really do it though. But anyways, we're here now. So, oh, oh boy, well, we're gonna get into though. So, in case you guys follow me or don't follow me, you probably or probably not know this though, but I did a poll on which category I should put High Guardian Spice in. And honestly, I'm surprised a lot of people chose the Magical Girl podcast though, because honestly, that's kind of the one thing I didn't expect it to be on though. Now, let's get one thing out of the way first. I know what some guys are thinking. This show this show right here considering that everyone and their grandmothers talked about this show everyone has already taken this series pieces from bit to bit and to smithereens if anything to judge by though well my response to that is it's my channel and i can pretty much talk about something that even if it's outdated to some people that doesn't necessarily mean i can't talk about it but even with that said however i knew i had to do high going spice one of these days even before I started my channel, I wanted to talk about this show. So, let's start to about how this show became a disaster and work on it from there. So, I'm guessing a lot of people have first discovered this show, if you can call it that, on something like Crunchyroll when there was a quote-unquote trailer for it. I say quote-unquote trailer because if you've watched this series, you probably already knew this already while going in, but High Guardian Spice didn't really have a trailer from the first time they had it. It was more of a behind-the-scenes thing, if I'm being honest with you guys, and I'm not trying to shame the people who want to do that. I mean, I do like behind-the-scenes stuff, but why was it here in the first place? Couldn't it have been better if you just showed a trailer about the actual show? Granted, I was going to comment on that so-called trailer, but I really don't think it's really safe to say that I can't do it. Mostly because the comments have been turned off and the ratings for it were absolute madness. Like, they had to disable the ratings so then they could hit the show on Crunchyroll. But for something like High Guardian Spice, that's supposed to be an American animated series, even though there are some bit of anime influences, I guess you could say. Now, I'm not saying that you could didn't do any anything animation with my inspiration. I already went through this in my Star vs. The Force of Evil. That series in itself was inspired by any kind of magic girl you could think of. Mostly around Sailor Moon, but I'm still saying that though. Hell, even Avatar The Last Airbender and Korra had something anime influenced with those series. But honestly, when it comes to High Garden Spice, I can't tell if of the, uh, they were on crack on Crunchyroll, or if they were just putting it on their site because it looked like an anime. Which, honestly, yeah, it did kind of look like it at first glance when I saw it, but that doesn't really get into it, though. Anyways, in 2019, that trailer, after getting some backlash, they decided to... I guess they decided to shelf it after that, though, but... Needless to say, it wasn't even that much good to begin with, though. Like, I know some people are probably thinking in their heads maybe they just didn't want to get more and more backlash, but that doesn't make any sense because a few years later, two years later specifically, the show finally got released. And all 12 episodes of the show have been released on Crunchyroll and such, though. However, I myself don't use Crunchyroll. Not anymore. I mean... Let's get this out of the way. In 2019, I didn't know anything about this trailer. Hell, I didn't even know it existed until 2021, back when I was around 21 or 22 at the time, when I was still going through a lot, though, after my moving days. 
yeah, apparently this show was released in October of 2021, which was three years ago. Shit, I can't believe how much older I'm getting, or it's just that time goes too fast. I really hate it when my life goes too fast. Oh, well, at least I know how many kids are actually watching my channel, so there you have it, kitties. But unfortunately, yeah. I had to suffer through watching this show because I said, fuck it, I might as well watch it, though, before I'm making this video. Well, sort of. I didn't even watch this show until last year of 2023 when I was going through a lot with my family. And even then, when I was doing my YouTube shorts, at least I think that's when I started watching this show, I could not muster up what was going on here, though. I'll be honest with you guys, watching this show was not this show was not just a chore for me, but was also pretty much pointless all along though. I know some people are thinking that I shouldn't have suffered through it though, but let's be honest, this show has so many problems as it is, I could make a whole book of it and I still wouldn't be done with that said book. Like I could put it into two parts like they did with it. Okay, that's enough rambling though, but how did I get introduced to this show if I've never seen anything like this before then? Well, simple. Around 2021, I started seeing a clip of it on YouTube where they say how to not write a bully character, where one of the characters, and I'll get to them in a bit, happened to spill tea all over one of the other character. And I have to say though, this is something that I'll admit it is pretty stupid, but I honestly didn't think there was anything bad about it until I read the comments because quite honestly that's what I always do. I don't know about you guys but yeah I always scroll through the comments to see what people said about it and then work on it from there though. But even with that said however that was probably the only clip I got of it before that. I mean I did watch the show back like last year and I saw Guardian HQ who tore the show apart. He may be tearing it apart still, but honestly though, he's pretty sporadic with his videos nowadays. Yeah, he does Velma though, but Guardian HQ is someone I actually do like. Though I still can't get over the fact that he's younger than I am. Jeez, he sounds older than I am and still though. But we're getting off topic. Anyways, what's this show really about? Well, I guess you could say that, but honestly it's hard to tell what the show is like. We start off with the somewhat interesting premise. Basically, our main characters are going to the school known as High Guardian Academy. And as you can tell, the High Guardian Academy is basically the school where they you know, teach them how to become guardians with magic and creatures and such along the way and to go ahead and do some fighting and stuff like that. And that's about all I can say about the premise because honestly, the rest of the show, if I'm being honest, doesn't even compare what's gonna get to lie in store though. Yeah, after watching the first episode, which took me hours to watch because I really couldn't tell what I was watching, I can definitely tell I was not in for a fun ride. Mostly because the first episode basically starts off with Rosemary and Sage, our two main protagonists, who are going to the school without any hesitation and need to expect to do that. Now, I'm not expecting the show to wait a little longer for them to get to the and we like say take about half the episode but for fuck's sake these scared characters are not even no, really nothing i could say from myself though like if anything no it feels like a waste of my time if there's nothing that's happening in the first episode oh in the first episode it's basically what you expect this show to be like though like for example i get that some people are going to say that you don't have to have everything explained to you. And to me, me personally, I have to say when writing stuff like that, I'll be honest, yeah, you don't have to establish everything, no, that's ludicrous. But it's really clear to me that if you don't elaborate on stuff like this, you're not gonna get anything. <coughs> and I have substance for that. But honestly, that's what I think of this show overall. There's nothing really salvageable about it. The first episode after we see Rosemary Sage going off to High Guardian Academy, because that's where they go though, that's about all we see about their families. In fact, we don't even get flashbacks of what their, their dynamic was like, or how they met each other, or something like that. Again, this series has 12 episodes, and we're expected to follow these characters of what makes them want to become guardians and what makes them work as a team and have a coming of age story now i'm a sucker for coming of age stories if that wasn't obvious for my rainbow academy podcast though admittedly i will say it's not 
easy to write something like a coming of age story. Yeah, it will start off like you would expect. The character starting off pretty flawed to the point where it can feel like that at times though, but at least they'll have something likable in their charm though. But do you know what the difference is between those coming of age stories and this one? Those stories have something happening at the first time you started watching or reading something like this. The reason why I'm saying this is because in the first episode, we don't really get to to see much except these two characters, Rosemary and Sage, as I mentioned before, travel to the place they're going to, and we're expected to care about them after that. In fact, there was also a part where they go to where both the girls go to Sage's aunt's place, like both their aunt's place, and then for some fucked up reason, they use these portals to get there. Okay, I know that portals are really nothing new for this year's show, I'm being honest though, but at the same time, I have to wonder, why didn't you just teleport her to them there, instead of just having them travel throughout there though? Like, I don't think any of these girls possess any sort of power to teleport there. I've watched this show myself, and trust me, it's hard to remember with so much happening and not happening at the same time. And it's only gonna get worse from here though. They do men- Chin, and that they are going to High Guard Academy. Though honestly, though I have to ask, what does High Guard Academy feel like, though, other than that, though? Like some people could make the argument that maybe it's supposed to be a place where you can learn to be a guardian, but even so, we never get to hear why this is the only school we can go to, though. Like, is it a good school that's only there for? You to actually learn how to become a guardian? Is it because it's the only school they can go to or something like that? This question is raised at my head at the top all the time and I'm here wondering, questioning to myself, when are they going to answer something? Because after watching all 12 episodes, which honestly wasn't easy, yeah, it's really no wonder why a lot of people find this show very degrading at times. I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't watch this show all at once in one day. Now if I did that, you'd probably see me falling asleep right now. But honestly though, what really gets me about this here is that I really didn't binge through it all at once. I watched half of it one day and half the other half of it the next day last year, and I still couldn't muster up what was going on though. The Writing itself is so incompetent that I'm surprised I managed to get through that even faster, though. Though, honestly, that could be just me and me problem, though. I'm not saying you have to explain everything or collaborate the characters about all like that, though. But if you're not going to explain anything, I'm, I, don't, I don't know about you guys, but I think everyone was going to lose their patience. And I shouldn't speak for everybody, though, because like I said before, I'm not their narrator. But with Heartgrinding and Spice... What's there to salvage from? Like, aside from maybe going to an academy and then they meet a long way some friends, I guess you could say, there's not much to it other than that, though. We do get some other characters along the way, but, well, if you've watched my series of uh, Magical Girl podcasts so far, let's talk about the characters. Now, obviously, I can barely call these here characters because a lot of them just don't share tropes that... That I'm really going into, though. Rosemary does sound like a shonen protagonist at times, though, where she's you know, pretty dense, but then she always has her intelligence at times, though. But her intelligence doesn't really show that often. I mean, if anything, though, she's more reckless and careless, and what's more, her personality doesn't really mesh well. Now, I will say, though, that she does seem like she wants to be a guardian so badly, which I'll fully admit, that does sound pretty nice. But why, though? Aside from maybe being inspired by her mother, though, we don't really get that much established about why she wants to become a guardian. In fact, the only thing we see of her is that she just wants to be a guardian and all that other stuff, and she's just pretty much annoying to listen to. I hate to you know, distance myself from the voice actress. I'm sure she's a decent person in real life, though, if anything, but her voice is just so degrading when it comes to her talking to the characters though like it sounds like what happens when an older woman like say in their 60s or so tries to voice a character and then all of a sudden they don't sound that good when doing it and honestly aside from being i guess inspired by lavender rosemary's mother there's not a lot to her other than that though i mean i get that some people are gonna say it takes a lot of inspiration to be like someone that you admire which i'll fully admit yeah that is true but honestly, we don't get that much to it. We only get like, what, a few flashbacks after that? And then 
we get to also the part where she breaks her locket and then she had not a, a picture of her mother, but a picture of a cheesecake? What the fuck? I don't even know what the hell that was though. If this were a locket with her mother in it, I could and understand that, but there's no clear sign that that had to happen though. Why did it have to be a cheesecake? If they're trying to make a joke, I'm not laughing it. And nor am I gonna and say we're laughing with it. It's probably laughably bad to some people, but I'm just not buying it. The next character is Sage, who starts off pretty much what you expect, a shy character who still has her brains. And honestly, while I do admit those characters are pretty used a lot of the time though, I actually didn't mind that. But yeah, she doesn't seem to mesh pretty well though. Like, there are some moments where I can't explain what Sage is trying to do here though. Like, even sometimes where Rosemary was being rude, she'll you know, usually just, like one time when she was talking to one of her aunts, saying chewing is for cowards. Who talks like that? Yeah, the dialogue I'll get to later, so hold your horses. Anyways, back to what I was saying, Sage is character does start off pretty alright, but until she gets into her, I guess she doesn't want to do old, she wants to do old magic, but she wants, to, and she has to do new magic or something like that. Question, how does old magic and new magic function? Or in this case, what is the difference between those two? From what I can tell though, if it were me making a theory, my guess is that old magic is basically something that happened back then that you could use, but new magic is something that I feel like is more for the modern days, like today's world. Now, I know I'm probably like, reading too much into it though, but honestly, that's like the best way to describe the magic though. And when it comes right down to it, that's what I think of the magic overall. It's really gone to the point where it's obvious that they're trying a little too much for themselves. To the point where it's obvious that they want to get somewhere, but they're not getting anywhere at the same time. You have to be quite the accomplishment for that, so round of applause for that at least. And yeah, that's really something I have to say about <laughs> Sage though. Well, other than say she's a sexist, seriously, I know that some people are going to point this out in the comments and yes, I am aware that one of the ladies is a man hater. Seriously though, what the hell? I'll get to genders later though, but what I'm trying to say here is that this seems pretty forced, especially because what did guys ever do to you? In fact, we've seen your father at the first episode, does he not talk about his feelings? Because he's because Sage does this to a Snapdragon, where Snapdragon has every right to snap at her, and rightfully so, because she's saying all this bullshit about how guys don't talk about their feelings or something like that. I've met a bunch of guys in my times, though, even the ones that I didn't like that went after me, but even so, I can at least say they admitted their feelings right away. Like, seriously, what kind of language is that? Then again, this whole series has bad language, if anything, judged by. Speaking of which, though, let's talk more about the characters. Then there's also Parsley, and I'm guessing she's the most decent out of the main characters, but honestly, I couldn't get that much into her character, though. She's basically like a dwarf, and she's also trying to be a blacksmith by fixing the locket that Rosemary not that was broken. Okay, I'm no blacksmith expert, but may I ask, isn't a blacksmith supposed to be one that's supposed to make weapons for those characters or anybody who needs a weapon to, oh, I don't know, defend themselves when they're battling? I'm just saying, guys, I don't think you need a blacksmith to fix jewelry. I think you need more of a jeweler to do that shit. And to be honest, that's what I think of, of that uh, statement overall, though. Of course, Parsley does have some bit of uh, issues going on, like say her family, but while she was pretty nice in a lot of ways though, I can't help but think she's right down to the point where she has family issues. Now this can work as a character arc though, but when you get right down to it, it's just glossed over to the point where we're obviously going to forget about it after that. You see what I'm doing here guys, I'm going out of my mind. And it's pretty clear that while she does have her nice traits though, she also seems to have uh, threw her hammer at one of the characters on their foot, though. Okay, one thing's for sure, though. I get that you're trying to make it look like it was an accident, but she really did that on purpose. So, yeah, you really made yourself look like a screw-up. And not in a funny way, either. So, ha! And there's also time, and 
I don't know about you guys, but I actually don't mind cold-blooded characters if they actually have one thing. Demeanor that's actually reasonable. But when it comes right down to Time's character, I could not get into her character whatsoever. I mean, her first gimmick with Rosemary after Rosemary starts waving her sword around. Yeah, because when you're a guardian, you wave your sword around. Yeah, seriously, I don't know what the hell's up with that. It seems like Time just snapped at her, though. I get that Rosemary did it out of, say, she wanted to show herself that she wants to be a guardian because the show likes to determine that and such. But Time doesn't make it much better. She sounds like what happens when one of those people from the comments bitch at you and just came out of nowhere thinking, what the hell? And she does have problems with her family too, though, like, say, her mother and everything, though. But I actually watched the episode with her mother and her mother didn't seem all that bad maybe she's bad off screen or something like that but again we never see that and it's pretty obvious that time is basically just uh, throwing her mother to the curve every time she does that though for someone who's supposed to be a, a cool cold-headed and uh, cold-minded character though you seem to underestimate that's not how it works though look i'm all for having characters that have some family family issues and stuff like that but you're not making it any easier for me to can't do that though. Also, she's pretty good at archery, which honestly, yeah, for an elf, that does seem pretty nice though. Though, for someone who's supposed to be an elf, I know we're not going by logic here, but I'm surprised that she's actually pretty tall. Because wouldn't she be the almost the same height as uh, Parsley at that rate? Okay, I'm not gonna read too much into that, but still. Then there's also Amaryllis, and honestly, Amaryllis may be uh, one of the, my favorite characters, and even then, that's not my same by saying much. Yeah, Amaryllis is basically Amity at first glance, though. Right down to the first two letters of her fucking name. Now, I'm not gonna lie, though. I do like Amity more, but I'm, I'm gonna say this right here and now. There's a lot of things I could take apart here. Like, I will say Amaryllis does have a lot more logic than these girls do, but honestly, the writers try to make her into a bitchy character. For someone who's supposed to be bitchy, that's not really how it works. If you want to make the character bitchy, at least show that they're in the wrong or something like that. Or maybe they're trying to give her a redemption arc or something, which I highly doubt this show has any idea how to make a redemption arc worth it, though. Because at least someone like Amity from the Owl House or Zuko from let's say, Avatar The Last Airbender. Those two are my favorite characters to actually show redemption arcs, though. There are others, but I thought I'd bring up two at the top of my head, though. And honestly, when it comes right down to Am Amaryllis, she's not anything I call too bad, but she does have her somewhat snobbish behavior, though. I know that she also is voiced by the same person who gave us the first the voice of Alex from the first few seasons of Totally Spies. But even with that said, I still have to wonder why do they have to make her sound like a grouchy old grandmother? Like, I know that older women and older men are always voicing teenager characters at times, though. But even with that said, it still pisses me off that you couldn't find an actual person to voice a teenager. Or, I don't know what's better, though. Have the actress sound like what she sounded like before now? I get that there's a thing called range, but that's just too much range, if I'm being honest, though. And to be honest, though, I think it shows that Emeraldis does show her compassionate, though. And to be honest, she does seem like the kind of character I would root for. Like, seriously, though, I mean, if anything, if she was the main character and if we see what she's like and everything, though, we may have done more in depth with her. But again, the series is so incompetent that it doesn't know what it's like, though, when it comes to competent writing. Yeah, this writing really hurts when you think about it for even a second or two. Or worse yet, a millisecond. And there's also Snapdragon. And I'm gonna have to apologize in advance if I can't find out what gender this person goes for though. Wiki says that it's, it's, that Snapdragon is a trans female while others in the show say that Snapdragon's a male. So I'm just going to go by they them pronouns. I do apologize. I mean, I know that the voice actor is a trans female, but it's pretty unclear how much you really want to muster up that this show is supposed to show that Snapdragon's a male, and yet for some reason they say a wiki is a female though. You're not making any better, guys. And before you say anything, yes, Snapdragon is supposed to be, I guess, a female trapped in a male's body. I'm guessing that's how you're supposed to put it. But honestly, though, he does 
have some good qualities to him. Not that that's saying much with this show, but you get what I mean. Anyway, Snapdragon is one of those characters that does start off very pushy and a bit of a bully, but over time, you do get to see them grow a bit, though. They also are the one that I mentioned before where they snap at Sage for talking about how guys don't talk about their feelings, though. And honestly, I have to bring this up, though. Aside from um, um her father, though, Sage, have you by any chance dropped your memories after episode, yes, the previous episode? Because you did hear Parnell talk about his feelings before, though. Yeah. There are other characters, but honestly, if I listed everyone, we'd be here all day. But let's talk about uh, one of them before we get into anything else about this show. One thing's for sure, though, I think you already know what I'm, who I'm going to talk about next. Yeah, you know it, I know it, let's talk about him. It's Professor Carraway, and honestly, he's a self-insert character. Now, I don't want to talk about self-insert characters that much to my audience because I don't do self-inserts in my story anymore. It makes me cringe when I try to see it though. Now, I'm not saying you can't do a self-insert character, and sometimes those can work, but I have no idea how you can write that work. Yeah, take it from someone who's supposed to be a writer and doesn't know how to write it though. I'm still learning, guys. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Professor Caraway is not just a self-insert character, but there's not much to him. Other than he's Ray Rodriguez and his acting is pretty stiff. Look, I'm not trying to diss myself from Professor Caraway. Well, he's a voice actor, or in this case, creator or anything. Ray is probably a, a guy that you're probably all familiar with in all himself, though, when it comes right down to it. But I'm just left here wondering, what does trans have to do with a character? Hell, I'm writing a trans character or two in my story, and even I'll admit that's really far-fetched to say from something like that. What I'm trying to say is that he's not really anything special. Like, the fact that we... Yeah, most from this guy is that he's trans and he's just there to help help the students out. That's not really anything special. Like, I get that he is trying his best to do what he can to emote, though. But I think you already know the scene that I'm probably talking about, where he admits that he's transgender. Okay, that's okay, though. But I highly doubt anyone cares about that at this point. But speaking of... Which, though, I think you started realizing the biggest problem with this show. Well, one of them anyway. A lot of the writing is so incompetent that I could barely tell what the hell they're trying to muster up here or in this trace try to accomplish. When you have this writing that's so jumbled together, I highly doubt anyone's gonna realize what's gonna happen if they don't notice it any further, though. Plus, the show itself is pretty much not even explaining what goes on, though. Like, how are we supposed to care about the Guardians? What makes them stand out more? For that matter, what do we need to know about uh, what makes them special to understand how this place works and all that other stuff? As Val Kilmer once said, it raises just raises too many questions. The only theory I could think of, and this is just my 1% theory for most of the show, however, is that it seems like they're going for the story you've all seen before. Students going to a school where they learn about magic and stuff that happens along the way, though. Well, I guess you could write that off, but seriously, though, I have nothing against shows having a school set into something in a fantasy world. I mean, I've seen plenty of those before, though. I've watched shows like Little Witch Academia, My Hero Academia, and honestly, I'm writing a, a story, if you remember from my Rainbow Academy story, I'm trying to write something about to characters who are going to the said school. And when it comes right down to it, High Guardian Spice is basically taking too much out of itself to make it look like it's coming from Little Witch Academia. Look, I already talked about Little Witch Academia on my channel before, if you recall. But even with that said, however, that doesn't really muster up what I have to say about this show. Like, right down to the uh, color palettes and something like that, I will say it does look pretty in hindsight, but it doesn't even go flow what it is, though. Let's talk about uh, the other thing I have a problem with this show. The animation. And honestly, while I didn't think there was anything wrong with it at first glance, though, it was done by an American, for an American audience, though. But again, if this was really an American animated series, though, why was it on Crunchyroll? Isn't Crunchyroll supposed to be about anime and stuff like that? Now, maybe I'm reading too much into it, because honestly, you can still make something anime-inspired while still having an American animation. 
But it feels really egregious here, though, to the point where there's not a lot of, of movement to the characters, to the point where it's obvious that there's a lot of animation errors. Even when there's the one part where they were getting Rosemary's lockets, the two creatures that were flying, seriously, I could not tell what those creatures were, one of them was on one end, and then the other one came on the other end, and then they switched color palettes. And before you say that was bad editing from all those other users, no, it was true though. I had to watch the series to see how bad this could be though. And can I just say some of these characters do have similar aspects I've seen in other characters, like Rosemary. She reminds me of a blander version of Chibi Usa from Sailor Moon. Like, right down to the pigtails and, and the somewhat of of the colors, I guess you could say. But at least Chibi Usa looks a lot more appealing, though that could just be me because honestly, though, I don't have my Nayuko Takuchi's art style that much. As much as her big eyes can get at times, but they're not as big as some other eyes, but still. I think what really gets to me about this series is that it just doesn't seem you know, like the characters actually flow their own originality, though. Now, I will say, though, the, the part I will say Ray Rodriguez did have some bit of a concept with Rose and Mary, but it just looked like Kimadoka magic uh, in a lot of ways, though. Seriously, what the hell? And there's also Parsley, who I don't know if it's just me, but did anyone feel like she almost reminded anyone of Sadie from Steven Universe? And honestly, this, it may just be me, though, but honestly, I don't mind that that much, but it's pretty clear to me that it's pretty obvious they're trying too hard though and i already talked about amaryllis and amity though but i didn't even mention that <laughs> amity's yeah, actually a lot more appealing than whatever amaryllis looks like though seriously is that really hair i thought at first it looked like a helmet though like you could just stick a lego piece on top of it and you lose nothing after that some of the characters do look somewhat appealing though for some a degree, but they're not enough to actually save the series in a lot of ways, though. So yeah, the writing is bad, the animation has a lot of hiccups, like so many that I'm surprised no one followed up their hiccups at this point, and so on and so forth. So what else is there to talk about? Let's talk about the one question I wanted to ask, and I hate to go with manga comments said before me, but it has to be addressed. Who is this for? Like, I've watched this show for myself, and I still have yet to wonder if this is supposed to be a kid's show, or a show for adults, or maybe at the very least or most, depending on who you ask, it could be just for teens. Now, I'm not saying that you can appeal to oh, everybody in the audience, but there are some things that just made me question some things. Like, there are times where the characters will have the light swear words, I guess you could say that. It's like, they'll say crap, or they'll have something along the lines of they just censor out what they're gonna say, like the one time when Amaryllis was in the room with everyone else though, along with Snapdragon, and to, they she was gonna say a bad word, but then they censored it out though. And it's pretty clear that they also had this lesson about transgender people, about that's what it means and everything though, which I'm pretty sure the audience is shaking their head. How is this important to the story? Because I'm sure everyone when know what transgender is. It's basically someone who was born with the opposite gender they feel they felt say like it wasn't part of their body, like gender dysphoria. And honestly though, while I'm still writing a transgender character or two in my story, I have to ask myself, what does this have to do though? Like, do you have to explain to the audience what transgender is? I highly doubt any adult would ask, hmm, What's transgender? And then they'll have to do this already. Or better yet, they could just look it up themselves if they have to. In fact, the only time I can at least say for this year's show to actually get somewhere isn't until episode 8. Not even joking. Only about a quarter of a way into the show and we actually get some conflict. It doesn't last too long because it's only for a two-parter. But even with that said, it had something going for it though. And there's also the fact they also had villains, like, say, Olive, who was basically a cat villain, though. Which, honestly, yeah, it's really something that's overused, but I really don't mind it that much, though. Even if, yeah, she looks like she could have came out of the Tokyo Mew Mew universe. Yeah, I really do want to do that Magical Girl show as soon as I can, though, but I have yet to watch it, though. I'm still working on it, guys. Please give me some patience. And there's also this psychotic villain, and who also tries to 
Well, he does shapeshift into people, like, say he'll you know, look like someone else in something like that. I guess you could say that, not the character. But honestly, there's not much to him than that, though. But honestly, aside from that, though, the villains do seem kind of compelling in a lot of ways. Like, they'll one can turn into someone else while the other one can... And look like a cat or something like that. Yeah, that's basically what you see in a lot of shows, but I don't mind as much as people say it. And we get right down to it, though. The show itself has a lot going for it as well, though. And when it comes right down to it, though, when I say a lot of things going for it, though, I mean only in those two episodes. However, that doesn't stop it from being and such a chore to get through. Like, Rosemary and Sage just go ahead and bicker about how things are not like they're supposed to be, or oh, they're supposed to do the things that they, one of them wants to do, or something like that along the way, though. So, where did this come from, anyway? Are you saying that uh, Sage is trying to say that uh, Rosemary is pretty much annoying? Well, granted, she does say that in said episode, but even so, though, that's taken away out of context for the show like you think i'm annoying and to that i'd say out of context yes but in context why the hell is sage saying this to someone that's supposed to be her friend or in this case girlfriend because let's be honest these two can make a very bickering couple if they have to and it comes clear that this show just doesn't know how to show conflicts though and there's also this one part i will say they did have where time has this water i guess that supposed to heal though and then all of a sudden they have these so-called ninjas that can't seem to go to back to the water to get where they're from though uh hello you could just get water elsewhere or unless that's the only water you can get just from there why not just go ahead and sneak past them i'm, I'm sure the, the ninjas if they're really in this series sure you know, i can see naruto just of being dazing off right at this point. And I still don't understand why you can't do so already, though. Or at least I thought they were ninjas, though. Yeah, my sh my shitty god. This show is so incompetent, it hurts my brain every time. And there's also the fact that that's a, there's also Snapdragon, who seems to have got in a way when it comes to someone who has never seen anyone cross dress before? What the fuck? If transgender is a thing, why is it... And it's uh, so hard to actually see a cross dresser. Seriously, though. What the hell? And it's pretty clear that I don't think I need to say anything else about that other than you probably have never seen a cross dresser before in your whole life, though, did you? Look. I will say, though, when it comes... Right down to the whole limits, though. I cannot muster up how I feel about uh, how it's like uh, uh, Parnell's cousin. Yeah, I'm just gonna say that because I'm not gonna pronounce in his entire name, though. That's pretty much what I have to say, though. And when it goes right down to it, though, a lot of these here characters seem to have a lot of things going for them as is, but there's so much that I can't even muster up what it has to do, though. But there's also the fact that they had their magical girl transformation in episode 11, where they have to fight off this sea dragon or whatever. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to go ahead and guess what the hell these things are, because honestly, the show doesn't like to explain things. So why should I, huh? Anyways, back to what I was saying, though. Well, we, the closest we get is have them have these magic rings that come out of these here. Or clamshells that Red Bud just shoved them in the water, though. Yeah, I didn't mention Red Bud before, but basically, she's what happens if has Edna from the owl house where and to. I'm sorry, guys. I really am. It's really hard for me to at least tr from that point on, though. Anyways, though, I didn't talk about how to how the character. Red Bud before because honestly, when it comes to Red Bud, she's basically what happens if Ida didn't have her charm from the Owl House. In fact, this entire show feels like what happens if the Owl House weren't that interesting, which may I remind you, there's a lot better for it though, like the LGBTQ representation. Now, I don't know uh, to anyone else in my audience, but I actually don't mind LGBTQ representation. And time so when it comes to the show. However, I hate it when they have to shove it down your fucking throat. Yeah, this show is so 
Um, it means to Ellen that they might as well say, Hey, we might as well shove this down your throat and let the others just lay for disaster. Like, have you ever seen such a series that tries so hard to do something and then they just felt like they didn't have to, though? Look, I understand that writing is not easy. I understand that. However, that does not excuse why you have to make your writing so shitty, though. I understand you're tired. I understand it's not easy to write. And what's more, I still go through the process of my writing as well, though. I know it's not easy, though. But the truth is, I can't muster up how this writing feels at times, though, to the point where it's obvious they just don't seem to get what's going to come for it, though. And to be honest, if I had to talk about the last episode, yes, the final episode, which is basically the two main villains that go so far as to stop these here students or anything like that it did seem pretty epic though at first glance but it was still a disaster because most of it is just them just trying to find out how to defeat these your two villains and what's more we also get at the part where they'll find rosemary's mother lavender and there's the whole point of this means to an end though and there's also the fact that we couldn't do anything about it because fuck you this your finale could have worked if your writing was so much more confident. I can excuse the bad animation if I can, though, but even with that said, it wouldn't be enough, though, to have people overlook it. I'm all for having bad animation, I'm trying to say, but the writing is something I still have a huge problem with. And to be honest, that's what I think of this show overall. This writing hurts so much, it was hard to get through times that I could barely tell how I feel about that. And the last shot of the series, we see is have the characters just trying out where Rosemary Mother is and say, Hi, Guardian Spice, because that's the name of their team, though. But wait a minute. Rosemary, Sage, Parsley, Time. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but those aren't spices. Those aren't spices in the slightest. And if anything, though, they're herbs. And... Amaryllis and Snapdragon are plants. I'm guessing High Growing Spice sounds like a catchier title, which it kind of does, but even with that said, I'm still high while watching this year's show. And no, I don't mean that as a, a literal thing. You get what I mean. I think what I'm trying to say here is that the last shot of we see, though, is have, have that Lavender looks like that they're going to vote for, she's going to revoke for revenge. But we never see that. But thank God we never get to see it. Because if this show did have a second season. Holy shit would it be that bad. Look. I've seen plenty of worse shows in my time though. And before you say anything. Yes I do plan on talking about Velma. Even though I'm going to have to burn that bitch to the ground. But hey at least we actually know how she died though. But what I'm trying to say is that. I feel pretty bad for picking apart this show. Unlike Velma. This actually did feel like the writers were actually feeling like there was some bit of story potential here. On paper, there's nothing wrong with showing some cliches here and there as you actually write them off as your own originality. And honestly, I'm all for it. But the truth is, this series was hard to get through. Not just because I had to go through a few episodes at a time, though, but because the writing itself is where it really falls apart at times, though. And I have to be honest, this was one of those shows that IMDb really had a low score overall when it comes to that, though. And it comes right down to it, that's when I think of this show overall, though. Like, IMDb rate this as a 1.6, whereas Velma is really one of those uh, shows that, that has a, wait for it, I should you not, 1.6 as well. So yeah, both were equally bad, by all things considered, though. Although... I have to be honest, I feel pretty bad for Ray Rodriguez. Well, I admit that he can't take any criticism, though, because honestly, he did this too, not just on your comment, but as well as Hopeless Peaches when he was still around. But it was pretty clear that this show also had a, a thing that uh, seemed like he had a lot of confidence in. And you know what? Having confidence in your writing and such like that doesn't hurt. But what does hurt is if you just lack it and to the point where it's obvious you don't know what to do with it with it though and when it comes right down to it i couldn't get investigated in this year's show it may be a show that everyone seems to not like although there are some people who will defend it despite the fact that you know some people have never actually watched 
the show. Yeah, you can't watch a show or a movie and defend it at the same time. That you cannot do. And it's pretty obvious I know what you guys are going to say. Yes, it's incompetent, but you can still riff on it, though. And to that I say, yeah, you can do that if you want to, but it's not going to use anything else, though. Maybe if it was more better written, I could at least excuse it, though. I can excuse bad animation from time to time if it's not as unappealing as it can be, though. But, but when it comes to something like this, I hate to say this, though, but this was really a jumbled mess to get through. The constant and uh, for deflection on how many people have actually talked about this show go so far as to say it's no wonder why this show was never uh, liked in the first place, though. Hell, I've seen plenty of shows that can be guilty pleasures in some ways, but those were guilty pleasures for all the wrong reasons. But with this series, yeah, I hate to be that guy, but you're better off watching something else, though. And thankfully, we'll get to that on next week, though. Next week, we're going to talk about a show that what happens when High Guardian Spice is done right. But until then, though, I only have three videos left to do for this month. Nakazu and Chacha video, my birthday video, which will come out on the 21st. Yeah, be sure to look that out, if anything, to judge by. And I hope to get it done before then. And there's also Velma. So yeah, I don't really have that much else to say other than... I would not recommend this show. Unless you want to laugh out how bad it is by riffing and, and ripping it apart, though, then go ahead. But it's not going to use any judgment, though. Other than that, though, yeah, this was one of the most incompetent things I had to say, though. But you know what? That's why I created my Magical Girl podcast. Even before I started doing Sailor Moon and the other shows and whatnot, though, I can at least say this is one of those shows I actually did want to take a look at when I was starting my channel. The only reason why I didn't is because, well, you already know the reason. I just didn't have the urge for it at the time, though. But even with that said, however, I still think it's still a show that I wouldn't recommend anyways, though. Objectively, I don't think it's anywhere near as worse as Velma, personally, but I'm not coming back to it anytime soon. So, yeah. Next time, we're going to look at Akuzuk and Chacha. Then we're going to look at my birthday video, and then... Well, maybe I can squeeze Velma in next week or so like that, but we'll have to see when the time comes. But hey, thank God that Velma did last for two seasons. I'm glad that show got axed. But even with that said, however, yeah, until then, have a good weekend, everybody. Stay safe. And as always, stay flamingotastic. See ya, people.